Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Trevor, and thank you so much again for tuning in to Mad Town Games. Now, I've been a huge Dragon Ball Z fan since I was about 10 years old. I've played numerous amounts of games in the Dragon Ball franchise, from uh, the Legacy of Goku games on Game Boy Advance to the critically acclaimed Budokai series on PS2. So when I saw that a new DBZ game was coming to current gen consoles, I got super excited. How does Xenoverse stack up against the other games in the franchise, you might ask? Well, I'll let you know right here. This is Madtown Games, and I am reviewing Dragon Ball Xenoverse. First off, I'm going to talk about what I really liked about this game. Starting off with the visuals. Overall, this game is really pleasant to look at. I'm playing on the PS4, and it's definitely the best looking Dragon Ball Z game to date. Everything from the characters, to the clothing, to the Kai Blast attacks, it all just looks fantastic. Another thing I really, really like about this game is the combat system. I was never usually a big fan of the 3D Dragon Ball Z games, but uh, Xenoverse seems to have fixed a lot of the major issues with the mechanic. There's still numerous flaws though, but eh, I'll come back to that later in the video. But overall, everything flows really smoothly. It definitely has a slight learning curve to it at first, but after about an hour or so, you'll be flying around and kicking all sorts of ass in no time. This is my first Dragon Ball Z game that I've played that allows you to create your own custom character. Uh, I think Ultimate Tenkaichi allowed you to do this too, but I never got a chance to play that game for myself. So, that being said, I really enjoy being able to put myself into the Dragon Ball Z universe. They give you five different races to choose from, including Earthling, Saiyan, Majin, Namekian, and Frieza race, which by the way is a terribly lazy thing to call a race. Each race has a different bonus or weakness that you can use special attacks, armors, etc. The customization options are pretty decent, and you can make a genuinely unique looking and feeling character. The game is a relatively decent length for a Dragon Ball Z game. Between the main story missions and the parallel side quests, you have probably 15 to 20 hours of gameplay, and then with the additional DLC, quests, missions, online fights, the farming of different skills, items, and the training with different masters you have, it's quite a bit to keep you busy. <laughs> I personally have about 35 hours into the game now and I still have a ton of training with masters to do and I'd love to get my hands on all the Dragon Balls a few more times. Alright, now on to some of Xenoverse's shortcomings. Now, as I said earlier, the 3D combat system flows pretty smoothly most of the time. However, when it breaks, it fucking breaks. Hit detection can be completely destroyed by something simple like a character being on the ground while you're in the air, or if they hit a wall before you hit them with a special attack. Like say you knock someone out of the air and they land on the ground, you figure that's an opportune time to come and smack them down, but it's not. You can't hit them when they're on the ground. It's ridiculous. It's incredibly hard to hit someone with just a basic attack like a Kamehameha because it's super easy to dart around it. I found the most broken thing in the game by far is the grade 8 fight. The hit detection in these missions is completely hit or miss. You could be right up in one of the Great Apes' face giving him all unholy hell and be doing little to no damage to his stamina. But then the next time you fight him, you can go up to him and punch him three times in the back and he's down for the count. Ultimate attacks don't affect them nearly as efficiently as basic melee attacks, and if you use an ultimate attack with a large area of effect, they glitch out terribly and get stuck in midair and do random flips. It's actually pretty hysterical. Another shortcoming of this game is the online battles. If you're playing a ranked match and you don't have either every stat increase point you've collected into stamina, or select 3 or 4 ultimate attacks, you're pretty much screwed. It seems every person's using the same attacks because they're the only ones that are effective on online. Don't even think about trying to use a Super Kamehameha or anything of the sort because human players can dodge it so easily it's not even funny. There seems to be absolutely no effort in balancing the online rank matches, which is such a disappointment because it could be such a good system. Continuing on with the online problems of this game, it's incredibly inconvenient for someone on your friends list to be on a team with you. You'd figure you'd be able to just start a team and invite one of your PlayStation or Xbox friends right to your team. But no, you have to meet them in-game on a multi-server and add them that way. But on top of that, you don't get to pick which server you put into. So it's completely by random if you and your friend are in the same server or not. It's not even worth starting a team because it would take half an hour just to find your friends to get on the same team. So, with all of that out there, I guess I should give you guys my final verdict, huh? Overall, I think it's a pretty sweet game. I can always log on, play, have a good time. The setbacks don't really ruin the game and it's com still completely playable and enjoyable. I would hope that they eventually do fix some of the errors through patching though, but I give Dragon Ball Xenoverse an 8 out of 10. 
It's not my favorite Dragon Ball Z game of all time, but it's definitely up there for sure. Thank you guys so much for watching. Keep it posted here on Madtown Games for everything gaming. I'm out. See you later.